Well, good afternoon, everybody, and thanks for thanks for being here. Thanks for being on this trip. Uh, today we had the I had the honor, pleasure of uh, trading out two uh, two very fine leaders uh, at the helm of Southcom here, and uh, I've known them both for some time, and hate to see Laura go. Uh, I think that Bull Halsey uh, will be uh, a tremendous replacement to be able to carry on there. As you know, as I said in my remarks, Bull uh, was a military deputy commander here. Southcom has two commanders, as you know. One, uh, one's an ambassador, the other was a military uh, leader. Um, so, really appreciated having the opportunity to thank our outstanding troops. Um, they, they have done great work. And there's a lot going on in DOD. Uh, and in the world, and so we got we've got a lot of work to do to carry on with the things that we've been been working on. Um, we just American people have spoken, and our fellow citizens have just elected the next president. Uh, and so we will be focused on making a, a, a smooth, calm, professional transition, uh, so that uh, the department can continue on with this really important work that. Uh, that we've been uh, we've been doing here over the last four years, and I think we've done a lot. And you know, you've heard me uh, talk about that in a number of play, number of cases, and uh, so uh, that'll be our focus going forward. Uh, and uh, with that, I'll stop and take your question. Hi, sir. Um, I had an election-related question for you. In addition to the economy and immigration, voters called U.S. foreign policy a top election topic, um, particularly the war in Gaza, in Ukraine, and before that, Afghanistan. You are at the table for all those decisions. How much do you think this election was a repudiation of the Biden administration's foreign policy? What responsibility do you feel you bear? And would you have done anything differently? Well, uh, let me say this, Nancy. You know, uh, what I've heard you guys talking about is that the election was actually about domestic issues, and it was about the economy. Uh, despite the fact that the economy is really, really strong, uh, and, uh, and we've driven inflation down to, uh, uh, to a point where nobody thought it would be possible to do, uh, the narrative that's been out there is that the economy uh, is in horrible shape, and it's just not the case. Uh, and so uh, because of that, uh, people, a lot of people, um, you know, that was their main concern. It was not abortion. It was not, you know, international affairs. Uh, it was that, uh, according to what you guys have said. In terms of our, what we've done, um, our international work, I, Nancy, I think we've done remarkable things. You know, we, 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 we um, strengthened NATO. We, we pulled NATO together. Uh, we, we have kept 50 countries focused on providing a se security assistance to, to Ukraine. Uh, the things that we've done in the, in, in the Indo-Pacific, quite amazing. You've been on some of those trips with us, and you've seen this firsthand. You know, you've seen things like, you know, we, we walked in a door, we were about to get kicked out of the Philippines. We're one, 180 degrees out from that now. We're, we have a great relationship with the Philippines, and and, uh, and we, we continue to work together in the, way, the ways that we should be working together. You look at AUKUS, you look at, uh, which is a generational capability that is really going to make a significant difference going forward. Our relationship with India, uh, much expanded from what it was when we walked in the door. Japan has doubled its, uh, its investment in defense, and the list goes on and on and on. So uh, despite supporting and managing uh, security assistance to Ukraine. We've been able to, and, and also supporting uh, Israel's uh, efforts to defend its sovereign territory, uh, we've been able to maintain uh, a focus on the Indo-Pacific as well. That's, we described that as our pacing challenge early on, and that remained our pacing challenge. So we, we, were, we were able to, you know, to manage challenges and, and resources and I think that put us in a, in a pretty good place. And it, and it sets up the country for success going forward, as long as we follow through on the important things. Thanks. Let's go take yeah, oh, I, I, just had, 
I just want to make sure I understand. Do you then feel that the war in Gaza was not a, a big factor, or what, it didn't play into sort of how voters um, approached the election? I'm, I'm telling you what you what what the media has said is that uh, is that the most important things on voters' mind was, was the economy, and that's what that's what people voted on. Uh, I didn't say that this was not important. Of course, it's important. I'm saying that what you've described as, uh, as the most important thing to the people in America was the economy. And, uh, you know, so I, I can't disagree with that. I think that's the way that people may have voted. But I can also say that things in, uh, in uh, Europe, things in, in the Middle East, very important as well. And I think we've done a magnificent job there in, in terms of managing things and not allowing things to... Uh, to blossom into a full-blown regional war. Uh, um, so during the first Trump administration, I think a lot of analysts said that the President Trump uh, politicized the military, undermined good faith and order, or good discipline and order, and uh, hurt alliances. How concerned are you that a second Trump administration will do the same thing when it comes to the military? Um, you know, I, I won't speculate on what could happen, Idris. I will tell you that um, we have an incredibly professional uh, set of leaders in the, a group of leaders in, in the military. Uh, and they are absolutely focused on um, doing the right things to maintain the competitive edge in the battle space, uh, acquiring the right uh, capabilities, developing the right policies and procedures and tactics, um, and, and strengthening the alliances and partnerships that we need to be successful. And they will remain focused on that. Uh, what happens above and beyond that, uh, Idris, I think, you know, we'll, we'll have to see. And I, I, I totally believe that our leaders will continue to do the right thing no matter what. I also believe that our Congress will continue to do the right things to support our military. Just a quick follow-up. Um, a military judge, I think, ruled that your decision to revoke the plea deals for the alleged masterminds of 9-11 was still valid. Um, do you intend to intervene again, or are you going to let the plea agreement stand? Well, Idris, you, I mean, you asked me a question about this uh, at the State Department, I think, several months ago. And what I told you then was that uh, this is a very important issue, and I thought at that point in time that it was important enough that I should be the person that made the decision on this. And I still feel that same way. Uh, again, I won't comment on any, anything that could happen in the future. But again, I would just emphasize that I, I still feel the same way. Um, Mr. Secretary, is there a mechanism in place right now that would allow uh, Donald Trump to conduct mass deportations using the active duty military? And are you concerned, to build off of Idris's question, about his idea to fire uh, woke generals he considers woke in the military? Um, you know, um, Ellie, I, I would, in terms of um, what will be done or can be done using active duty military, I won't speculate on, on anything there. But I would tell you that, you know, the, the law is fairly, uh, really well defined in what, uh, what can be done and not be done with, uh, um, with using active duty military. Our leaders are well versed in those laws. and. And we have the world's greatest uh, uh, legal core to make sure that assist us in making sure that we stay on, on track. In, in terms of um, selection of leaders, firing of leaders, it's the prerogative of the commander in chief to, you know, to select his leaders, and everyone knows that. And uh, and so, uh, again, I won't speculate on what what the president-elect. Uh, could do or will do, uh, you know, a number of things have been said. We'll we'll see what happens. But I would, what I would tell you is that these senior leaders will stay focused on their ta on, on the task at hand, and it is defending this country, taking care of our troops, succeeding through teamwork. I mean, this is what what they're made of. This is what they do, and I have 100 percent confidence in them going forward. And then on uh, Gaza, the we're about a month after the letter UN Secretary Blinken sent to Israel to ask them to do more or 
the U.S. may consider, reconsider armed shipments. Have you seen enough? Are you considering um, slowing any weapons to Israel? Uh, Ellie, uh, I won't comment specifically on this correspondence between me, Secretary Blinken, and our counterparts, which was not designed to be public correspondence. Uh, it was designed and, and, and does reflect our concern for providing humanitarian assistance to people of Gaza, which is uh, really important. You've heard me talk on this about every time that we've talked, Ellie, and, and you also know that every time I talk with Minister Gallant, this is an issue that I, I really, really emphasize, and, uh, and, and today when I talk to him uh, for the final time in, in, his, in his position, uh, I emphasized again how important this is and thanked him for what he did uh, to, to, help us get, uh, to help us move things along. They have made some progress, Ellie, to answer your question. Uh, it, more needs to be made. But uh, he was very deliberate in terms of going after those things that, that we asked him to do. So. Thank you very much, everybody. Appreciate it.